allow the county attorney's office to do all the appropriate legal Mr. work to uh, change the deed, etc. Motion by Commissioner Duke, second by Commissioner Atkins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Next item, Leonard. I was asked to uh, place this item on the agenda. It's uh, for the board to have a discussion relative to the environmentally sensitive lands program. Well, commissioners, I, I asked the administrator to stick this on there. And from the first week or so I was on the board, it became apparent that the board had come to the conclusion that we, as a board, were not going to buy any more sensitive land. Am I right, Commissioner Atkins? And that board has stuck to that. So when the, the uh, Sensitive Land Committee came and made their annual presentation some months ago now, the last statement from the chairman was that we should put the tenth of a mill back on the tax rolls. Uh, they did a referendum and the, the voters voted specifically not to continue to fund that. Now having said that, and Anthony, would you put this up for me? way towards me. You need to see the left side and go up a bit. Go up a bit. And then towards me over this way. So you can see the left sure. side more. Keep coming. Well, Where the X is on the left side of the paper. Keep coming. Just slide it to your right. To your right. To your right. Okay, that's for that. And the reason there's an X on the left side and on the top right is because when I printed this, the left side color codes didn't appear. So where the X is under the Little Wissacoochee corridor is that section that's marked <coughs> X on the map. So anyway, uh, on the 29th of June, there was a meeting of the Sensitive Land Committee, and that included staff time. And the discussion was to, to buy more land to open a corridor through the east side of communities. In my opinion, it's counterproductive because if the board isn't going to buy the land, we're using staff time to do the research and these folks are giving up their time to meet. I, I have a problem with that. And I'll let anybody who wants to talk about it on the board talk about it. I'll add something, I'll add something to it, uh, Commissioner. As we see on the map here, I've seen these maps of Fernando County before, but this basically depicts about 40 <clears> percent, <throat> maybe a little bit more, of property in Fernando County that's off the tax rolls. 33. No, I've, I've been told over. 42. I was told 40. I, it could be 33, 40, whatever. I'm not. I'm not arguing about that. Other counties do not. Well, I'm not saying all counties, but counties around us basically do not have that much percentage. Also, in Hernando County, we have sinkhole homes that have on have their own uh, tax issues and whatever. When you get down to the bottom of it, which I don't want to see a property tax increase, is because we have a small portion of property owners in Hernando County that actually pay a lot of taxes. And when we start taking more land off the tax roll, for whatever purpose, it puts more of a burden on the people that's residing and paying taxes, uh, property taxes. And uh, then demand comes for a different things, you go back to the same people, which is a dwindling uh, uh, land, volumes of land. And so 
I have nothing negative to say, but I think we've taken a lot off the tax rolls right now, and I just don't want to see no more taken off. And I think we even had discussions about swift mud property in the Royal Highlands areas in the past that uh, they should be back on the tax rolls or have an identification of what they're going to be used for. That's right. Thank you. Commissioner Rodden. Yes, thank you. And um, first of all, um, you know, this was on the agenda. There was no backup material at all for this and um, very confusing, you know, even what we were going to be talking about. And the fact is that um, I found out late that uh, nobody from the um, ESL committee even knew that this was until this was posted on the agenda that there was going to be this discussion, which I think it's, um, you know, certainly um, I haven't seen other committees treated that way and that they would should have this information. But when we're talking about um, environmentally sensitive land programs that have, my feeling, have brought more value that, to this county than they've taken away. And a lot of these properties that are around these areas that have been, um, that are th considered sensitive lands, those values of those homes are actually of more value because of that. And the other value is the fact is that um, I think with our flooding programs and what we have, a lot of these areas are pretty wet. And, you know, we're able to um, maintain these properties as um, areas that keep our county from flooding like Pasco County is in their Trinity area. They don't even know when they're going to become out from underneath the water because they went in there raped the land, left no trees, didn't provide the drainage, and the outcome is what they have now. But when you're talking about 33% or 40% or whatever it is off the tax rolls, but think about the same on the other side, that it's, um, hello, um, that it also doesn't require the services. I mean, for every time you're putting in a new development, you're also having to provide more services for fire and road and sheriff and utilities. And um, so, you know, there's a, um, a, a balance there. And then when you're talking about, well, that the voters voted in the last referendum, first of all, it was a non-binding one. The, the, the vote that took place was in 1988, and it was for 30 years. And if anybody you take a look at how the wording was on that ballot, it was very, um, let's say it was um, put in a way that it was hard to understand. And um, then the money was taken out of that and um, put into the mosquito control. So. You know, I am very much um, in favor of maintaining our ESL program, and uh, we, we have a very unique county. Um, this is why we're calling it the Adventure Coast, because we do have a lot of areas and different terrain that obviously um, Pinellas County wouldn't have or in areas that Hillsborough might have some, but not to the extent that Hernando County is. So, anyway, and I think there are people here to talk about it. Mr. Holcomb. Um, I guess I'm glad I, this was brought up. To me, I see this as a double negative. We're gonna, are we gonna really ask our taxpayers to, our property taxpayers to put up the money to buy this land, and then we're gonna increase their taxes for that, and we're going to e increase their taxes because there's going to be less property owners, especially in, in the uh, Ridge Manor area. Um, I understand the sensitive land thing, but most of the time when they want sensitive land, they want sensitive, untouched, unwalking, undoing, nothing happens in this land. You're not allowed to put sidewalks, pathways, anything. In, most ca in some cases, you're not allowed to put emergency cuts for emergency vehicles that you used to see when you drive down the some of the country roads and you see in the mountains and stuff, a lot of times they don't want that anymore. So um, I'm not seeing what the 
what this group can bring to us. I don't understand. All right. Anyone from the public want to you can come forward? You don't need a yellow sheet or anything. You want to come forward? Discuss the item. Uh, good morning, honorable commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I was a little surprised by this item. I called. I'm a, I was one of the people that called planning um, and talked to ESL committee to see if if they were going to be here, if they knew anything about this. Nobody knew anything. I actually called uh, <coughs> Administrator Sossaman's office and talked to the secretary, talked to somebody in the entire department. I couldn't find out anything. Nobody knew anything. I've, I'm personally offended because of all the con conservation. Is I need your I mean, name. Please. I'm sorry, Tina Hanais. I live in Brooksville. Um, I'm also a volunteer for the ESL, uh, uh, ESL program. Um, I, I am actually personally offended that none of the committee members are here. We don't. I couldn't even really ask anybody else to be here because I didn't know if there was anything. For all I knew, it could have been just passed off on the agenda. I would like to um, make help this discussion to be held another time when we have time to address the issues, but I just have to say one thing. Conservation land use, to me, use isn't just about building and development. We have our water resources, which are critical, without which we don't have any of the other uses. We also have an economic base in our, our tourism, our ecotourism, a phrase I really don't care for. Um, and this is critical for that. I mean, whether we buy land, whether we get conservation easements, and having sold land surrounded by conservation land in another county, I know that the value is higher in that county anyway when you're in a situation like that. But there are a lot of reasons why we need our ESL program, why it can be done fairly to the benefit of all our residents. Um, it's not just about tax base, although um, it doesn't have to be a problem for tax base. And until we raise our general economic um, uh, vista here in this county, um, we're not going to have a lot of rich people having big homes to fund everything else. This is a lower income county, and we need to work with that. But this whole tourism based on Mother Nature's gifts could really be huge here, and we're not fully addressing this, in my personal opinion. I hope we can talk about this again another time. Thank you. Anyone else? Please come forward. Hi, my name's Michelle Jenks, and I didn't re even realize this was on the agenda either, which I think you should have a meeting about it. But the other thing I have to say about it is I understand the sensitive lands. I agree we need sensitive lands because of the water and the environment and things like that. I agree. But it needs to also be done. They need to pay something. All these sensitive lands that they keep taking, they're not paying. It's just like some people use sinkholes to get taxes reducted. Should I say, oh, I have a sinkhole and not fix it so I can get tax reduction? That's not fair. We need to be fair to everybody. And if they want more land, that's fine, but they also need to help pay with property taxes. It could be 10%. It could be 20%. But something needs to be paid. The government keeps doing all this stuff and forcing it on us to pay. It's just like Peck Sink. We want Peck Sink. We want to close it off for the environment. That's fine. But then look at the money that they put into it. Something needs to be fair in this county because it's really getting unfair. Thank you. Thank you. Next. You've already spoken. <laughs> I've never let that stop me before. <laughs> Shirley uh, Yeah, I um, appreciate uh, this discussion. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, wildlife corridors are, are what this acquisition of property is all about. <clears throat> it's primary goal. We've spoken to members. We've attended a meeting and read past minutes. Uh, that recent state vote we talked about, I think Ms. Prentice brought that up this morning. She's the lay person on the uh, ESL committee. The 71% amendment, that isn't necessarily for a land acquisition. It's only proportion. Part of it's for ecology, for environmental protection. It's for maintenance of the lands, and that's what our legislature is deciding. It wasn't necessarily for land acquisition. Our Board of County Commissioners respected it was a 2012 vote that came to the, to the taxpayers. It was there that we voted not to give any more land, uh, monies to ESL. Now, why is that different than the state vote? The state owns around 28% as far as environmental lands have been set aside in the state of Florida. As we've already pointed out before, Hernando County is already 
uh, whatever you say, between 33 to 40 percent, I've heard 40 percent quite frequently, whatever that percentage is, we already have given more of our lands into the public coffers than the state average. So I think we're well above. What do we want to go, 50 percent? I did talk to some ESL members here one time two years ago when one of their annual presentations, and I said, how much land is enough for you? They said, there's never too much. We would keep acquiring as much as we possibly could. And when you look at what we talked about earlier, these aren't just necessarily uninhabited lands like Commissioner Holcomb pointed out. This is Ridge Manor we're talking about. You looked at that map that Commissioner Dukes had put up here. It, it, it goes south of Richardson Boulevard, the main drag. We're talking roads that are involved here, houses that are involved here, expensive lands. It's not just open swamp land as would be presented. So when you're thinking about taking out an entire community, we have to stop and think about this. Um, that, that's something to be really considered. Uh, again, um, for all intents and purposes, you know, acquiring these things. The ESL already has fulfilled its purpose to me. Um, 40 percent, we've got it. The U.S. Senate turned down this same project in 1994, Wildlife Corridor Project. They said no, but it's being done locally. It's being enacted every day, and I appreciate that this commission so far has not taken any more lands out of our coffers. And I would hope that um, we've done our share already. And I asked about ESL two years ago. Anyway, but part of this, too, is that it, nothing would stop the volunteers who want to volunteer. If they want to continue to volunteer in programs, nothing would stop them. Just land acquisition. I appreciate that you're looking at that, that that shouldn't be a part of, of what we're doing in this county. We don't need to acquire any more lands to be taken off the tax coffers. Um, again, anybody that wants to go out and remove invasives, I'm sure that help is still needed, and uh, that would be welcomed for anyone. Just a couple things about meeting, too. Um, meetings that continue so that some members are here that could hear. Uh, it's done at the library. There are time limitations. Uh, questions were taken throughout, but there was no public comment time. It's required by uh, Florida State statutes. Uh, we didn't have that. Uh, there were four people there from the public, and I, I jammed in one question, but um, we were denied that. And I'm understanding from past minutes that the same thing has happened. So no matter what, it needs to be recorded. The meetings need to be recorded. They need to be in a public venue where there's no time limitation on them. Um, agenda packets are not available online. None of the maps, we had to get personally show up at a meeting to get a copy, and we appreciate that they were provided to us there, but we weren't given those um, online. So there would need to be a lot of updates here. Uh, appreciate very much, and thank you for um, your open discussion on this. Thank you. Next. Um, I have heard a lot of misinformation um, for the past 15 minutes, so I'm hoping that perhaps she will give the committee the opportunity to present the facts and a question and, and discussion period. And, and I definitely understand when you hear a percentage like 33 to 40 percent off the tax rolls, that, that seems significant. But I know I can speak for myself. I moved to Hernando County because of what this county offers. And I know there's many, many people out there, and I pay one of the highest tax rates. In fact, I'm going to my job this afternoon. Even though I'm retired, I'm still working, but I'm working to stay where I live because I believe in it. The Environmentally Sensitive Lands Committee supports many of our parks also and has made a real difference. And I know Commissioner Dukes with the Gopher Tortoise relocation Hernando County's gotten many, many state funds because of our ESL, Chinsegut. Um, and my meeting with, with um, Senator Simpson, he pretty much came out and said counties that have ESL programs are going to be getting some of the money from Amendment 1 because our program is already existing. The lands that we're looking at for the connectivity, many of them cannot be built on. And they're either owned by the forest department or the agriculture department. We're not just going out there buying land that people could build a subdivision on. And we've prioritized it and, and we need the opportunity to get the complete facts out so the public can ask questions and get the correct information. So I hope you will provide that opportunity. Thank you. Commissioner Rodden. Uh, yes, thank you. And um, oh, wait a minute. we have somebody else that wants to say something. I'll, I'll wait. Go ahead, sir. Julio Jinks. I pay around $6,000 a year in property taxes. One piece of land ain't worth 50 bucks, but they raise my taxes on it because it floods. And you know which one I'm talking about, Jim? 
but they raised my taxes. But if I had a sinkhole underneath it, I'd get my taxes cut in half. Now, what is going on here? I'm, I, just buy it from me. Take it. Give me what it's worth, 50 bucks. <laughs> but I'm sick of paying $700 a year on a piece of property you can't even get to right now because it flooded for this little bit of rain we got. And I pay a lot of taxes in this county. Six, I, I guarantee it's about 6000 I ain't for sure my wife keeps budget of that. But it's getting out of control. Y'all want money for the fire department? Y'all got the money for the fire department last week. You want money for this? You got the money for that. I was coming here for the sidewalks, which you don't want me to talk about, but we can't even afford to keep a kid alive walking down Sunshine Grove Road. I think that should be priority, not some piece of junk lands. Thank you. Commissioner Rowden. Thank you. And first of all, um, this is not a situation that they're asking from anybody's asking for more money. This item was put on the agenda, and I would certainly hope we're not going to be voting on anything. And I would hope that uh, we're going to, um, if there is some changes that, that you're talking about wanting to make, that we would um, have um, all the facts out there. And let's work up, you know, have the sensitive land making a presentation or get a, a workshop together so that we, we know the value of our properties, which we, you know, we have a, a, um, a tre tremendous amount of value in the properties that are used for our ecotourism and other issues that we have that promote our new slogan, which is Adventure Coast, right? The Adventure Coast. So um, I would certainly hope that um, we would um, go ahead and set a, a time for this committee to come back when they have ample time that they even know that it's on the agenda. So thank you. Well, I think there's uh, quite a few of us that own land in the county, and I, don't, I own quite a few pieces of land. And... Uh, I can't, there's no way I could sell it for what the property appraiser is assessing it at, but that's what he does for a living. And so, uh, you know, unless you, unless you want to fight it, which you're allowed to do, you can fight it. But uh, I haven't done that. But uh, I also have pieces of land that I couldn't sell for the value that, that it's listed at, but that's fine. All right, uh, do we have, you guys want to speak on this? Is that okay, Mr. Dix? Sure. I'm Mary Elwin. I'm the Planning Operations Assistant, and this is Dawn Belser, our lead uh, technician, environmental technician. I did, Mr. Pianta is not available to be at the meeting today, and I just wanted to make uh, clear for the record, uh, for the purposes of the Sunshine Law, that the ESL committee meets in the sunshine. The meetings are advertised. There's an agenda and a packet available online and we do have citizens that attend them, and we have a big volunteer base. I just wanted those points brought to the, to the light because they do meet in the sunshine. That's a very important issue. So. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> it would seem prudent to allow the committee to make their annual, they try to come annually and update the board on their progress and activities, and it would seem prudent to allow them the time to do that to show the uh, board what progress has been made and the contributions that not only the ESLC committee, which is a volunteer base, bring with their levels of expertise to the program, but offer information on how the program benefits the county and its economic base. Don, you want to add anything? Uh, yes, I would. I would like to say there is a recreational component also to our properties and that they are open to the public. The only one right now that is closed to the public is Peck Sink, and that's because it's not safe at the moment. We haven't developed the recreational amenities and the areas that should be fenced off to protect the public from the sink area itself. But yes, we do um, make an effort to have recreation, and there are parks that, were in the, that are in the program. Let me see if I can just put up the map quickly. <laughs> is it 
There we go. Got it. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. And this just briefly, thank you, Anthony. And this just briefly shows some of the parks and preserves that are within the program. So you can see Bayport Park, Linda Patterson, Jenkins Creek, Lake Townsend. There are several parks that are supported by the program at the moment. And also, the issue with the with the corridors, that was the with Lacucci, Little with Lacucci project is what the committee recently met and talked about, and that was trying to link up a core piece of state forest property that's within there. They wanted to buy a couple lots to make the better connection. They looked at that whole area and narrowed it down to three areas that they would like to consider, and then we were going to talk about an acquisition plan on what we may or may not think we could acquire before they brought that to the board for consideration. And can I ask one? And when you're talking about um, the connectivity to the corridor, can you explain that a little bit more when, how, and, and show what you're talking about, Don? The committee had wanted to look at area number two, and unfortunately, I'm sorry, it doesn't show up very well. It's this larger area right here, right there. Okay. It's a green piece. It's, it's owned by Division of Forestry at the moment, but they can't really um, manage it very well. It's separate. So the committee wanted to go back and re-examine with Lacucci. It's been an area that they wanted to explore for some time. So they asked to, to have a meeting to have that discussion, and then there was a subcommittee that looked at that area to see what would make sense and what wouldn't make sense. And so that's kind of what they've been talking about and looking at. But, of course, the board has the ultimate say, and we wouldn't do anything or move forward without any type of okay by the Board of County Commission. And how would that benefit um, that area? I see. What, is that area, um, would that be... Um, an area that could be developed with homes and um, or is that we looked when we looked at what what areas they wanted to explore we looked at floodplain wetlands um, basically areas that aren't very conducive to um, residential development it's such a large area it's platted we didn't want to have the same type of situation that Swift Mud had where you bought lots and then you couldn't make a connection so they wanted to look at very small, discrete areas. And was there anything at all that could be done in with Lacucci? But they're still in that process of, of we're still in the process of working with the committee to make some sort of formal recommendation. They're, we're not, we haven't done like an acquisition plan, like what you would have to absolutely have. I was going to work with um, the vice chair, uh, Mr. Kelly, on that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else? No. Commissioner Dukes. I appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, I know that the referendum was in 1988. I've got the, the minutes from the September 18, 1990 meeting when they actually decided they needed a committee. I've got a copy of the bylaws that were written in 2004. Folks, the group did a good job for the county because the county wanted that work done. Okay? For over probably five years now, the county has made it clear that we're not going to buy any land. So to me, using staff time to go out and look at land to come to buy, to come to us, for us to say no, is counterproductive. Now I'm not going to say yes or no about land that we've already bought because it, we own it. But it's relative to today and logical for today that the time of, of cooperation between the Sensitive Land Committee and the board has come to an end. Volunteers can volunteer for anything else, but to set up meetings and take staff time to talk about buying land to a board, at least until elections come, is not going to buy land, it's counterproductive. And with that, I am going to make a motion to dissolve the Sensitive Land Committee effective immediately. Mr. I need to ask. Um, you can ask the attorney. attorney. Well, wait, let's see if we have a, do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Atkins discussion. 
I need to ask. First of all, um, this meeting was notified that there was a discussion. There was nothing advertised as to what the discussion was going to be. I'm a county commissioner. I had no clue what the discussion was going to be, that there was even, there's even any backup material. You know, if, if you are hell-bent on wanting to do this, then get a consensus, put it on the board for the next meeting, and then vote on it. But don't try to pull the wool over people's eyes by putting a non-descript, you know, information that had absolutely no information on the board for this board to vote for, for the taxpayers, for the taxpayers out there, might I add. There's, there's only five of us sitting up here, okay? Takes three to make that decision. But, you know, we represent a whole lot of people that would have liked to have known that this information was going to be discussed. And, and I am totally um, appalled that we're dealing with this this way. We need to have this on the agenda for a full discussion, just like your um, fleet management information, Nick, that you've done all this research and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that, but you bring it to the county, you have a workshop, you talk about it. Well, what's the difference here? Why shouldn't we be talking about this as a community? Garth, do you want to comment on whether this is legal or not or have John? Well, I, I think I worked with John, so why don't we ask John? If that's all right with you, Garth. Okay. John, you want to comment on whether it's legal, what we're about to do here or not? Well, it, the, uh, again, I didn't write the uh, agenda item. Uh, the, uh, I think the board is within its, its powers to do that. Uh, it's a question of whether or not it, it wants to. Is it ethical? That's another question. Well, first of all, you don't know if it's going to pass. No. Well, you listen to you guys. You were just sitting there talking for everybody, saying, well, this board has said we don't want to do this anymore. So I, I you obviously asked, knew. I actually asked my commission, commissioner, was, it, was my facts it, correct? Can't we just at least let the people be heard, and then you can vote whatever way you want, but at least... The point is, is that we're listening to people. All right, we've got a, a motion on the floor and a second. Any other discussion from anybody? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Passes three to two. That is so wrong. Mm. All right, Commissioner Rowden, you're up first. I am totally appalled about what just happened. Sitting up here, again, that we represent 170,000 people out there, and there's how many people sitting in here? And had we gotten the information we, and we tried to cover it up and lie to them, you're lying when you d don't disclose the truth. And that is an out-and-out -out lie. And I am totally appalled. 72% of the people of Hernando County voted for Amendment 1. 72% to preserve sensitive land in the whole state of Florida. We have more than all the state. Everest County has way above what the state recommends. And, but just the fact that you wouldn't take the time to allow the board to be here, they didn't even know about it. They didn't even know. I am, I'm, I'm, I've never seen something that I'm just so, shaken about as this. I was going to say something else under my time, but there, I, I can't. I'm, I'm speechless at this point. Thank you. Commissioner Atkins. I'm just appalled myself. That's all I have. 
Okay. Commissioner Holcomb. Um, I, I was willing to give them one more meeting, but it would have been a four to one vote. Um, I don't think there's anything at all that would have changed my mind. Um, one other thing I'd like to bring up, uh, the president, along with the housing and urban development um, federal agency up there in Washington has this really cool program called Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing. And what they want to do is take away local government's ability to make uh, decisions on the land that they're governing. So they want to decide that timber pines need some, some uh, urban type development near there. Fed, federal government wants to make that decision along with the president and the, the chairman of the HUD department. Uh, we need to keep that on our radar and if there's anything that can be done, do what we can to because we're the people that answer to the people in Hernando County and we can represent them better than our president or the director of HUD. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and no, on that item, item Jeff, uh, you, you brought that up at the REC meeting and uh, I think we would all appreciate it if you could keep us abreast. You seem to be on top of that. So if, if you could keep us abreast of what's going on, if there's anything we can do to stop it or, or to assist you in that effort, let us know. Commissioner Dukes. I was, uh, there was some talk going around a few weeks ago. I think there was some articles in local papers out of town about uh, BP money and some lawsuits and uh, I think there were some questions about why we didn't do that. You have to remember when this first came out that uh, the first thing that happened, and this was very soon after the oil spill, the shrimpers of Fernando County were correct, were, uh, were contacted to look at their losses. And then besides the compensations, they also hired a bunch of them to go up the North Panhandle to pull berms around. According to uh, the BP folks, Hernando County, through private individuals, was awarded $3.4 million because that was the people who had the most impact. Having said that, in 2013, the county put in some claims, and they didn't amount to a lot, probably totaled about $30,000, $40,000. And BP said, sorry, they didn't, they didn't recognize them. So it wasn't like we haven't done it. Uh, in the consortium itself, Private lawsuits were never discussed because obviously it's done at county level. Uh, people don't come to Hernando County to go to the beach because there isn't one. People don't come from all over the United States to go to our Gulf. We have people come from other counties to go fishing here. We have a uh, scallop season, but a lot of those people are local. The impact of tourism in Hernando County was almost non-existent. Some of these southern counties who have big beaches, and my wife is, you know, is, is involved with some, with some international realtors, and they were telling people in Europe, don't go to Florida, the beaches are all covered in oil. Because in Europe, that's not uncommon, quite truthfully. So those places had a right to file lawsuits about lost tourism. So it wasn't the county didn't get any money, it was dealt with more privately with the, with the shrimpers. We, produce more bait shrimp in Hernando County than any other county in the state of Florida. That is our Gulf, basically, uh, commercial area. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that it wasn't like we weren't doing our job or we had let something slip. We did apply for a small amount. It was turned down, but they did give us $3.4 million. Well, they didn't give it to us. They gave it to the individuals who filed separate claims because of the shrimping business. Thank you. you know, thank you for that clarification. Uh, I don't have anything to add except that uh, I was surprised at our budget hearing today, pleasantly. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all, you know, I get this question asked all the time, what's going to happen in the meeting? And I tell the people, how am I supposed to know that? 
until we vote. I don't know what's going to happen. So, anyway, Mr. Sossaman, you're up. Uh, just, just one thing. Uh, it's relative to the item M, the ESL program, the discussion. Uh, I just want to point out that I have been asked several times since I have been here over three years now, and uh, most of the commissioners will know that whenever a commissioner asks me to put something on the agenda for discussion purposes, I do so. Uh, usually, this, this, is, this is a Tuesday. Last Wednesday, I had a what I call an ACA meeting, which is uh, my four assistant county administrators, and all the various departments report directly to them. The ACAs report to me. We have a draft copy of the agenda. I was asked at that time by a couple of them, what do you mean by discussion for environmentally sensitive land program? I said, I don't know. I had a commissioner ask me to put that on there for discussion purposes. Uh, you may remember several months back, I also had an item put under my time for discussion of an MSBU for law enforcement. I did that. I'm usually chastised because if I don't know what, which direction the, the discussion is going to take until, like my chairman just said, we get to the meeting. It's just like baseball and football. That's why they play the game. So uh, I did what I was asked. The chairman and I go over the agenda after the ACA meetings on, uh, I think, 3 o'clock on Thursdays. Right, Mr. Chairman? Sir. And unless he says take it off, it stays on. And so that's all I've got to say, Mr. Chairman. Nothing is ever meant to exclude anybody or offend anybody. It's done for business purposes only. Yes, and uh, uh, what what our county minister just said, uh, you know, it's the chairman's prerogative to remove, remove something from the agenda, which I have not done and I'm not going to do. Uh, when my fellow commissioners want to put something on the agenda, I think I think it should be put on the agenda. I know we can do it with three votes, but I don't think we need to go down that road. Uh, if the commissioner asks for something to be done, that's fine with me. Let it be done. Commissioner Dukes, you want to add something? Well, quite truthfully, like you said, I wanted to discuss it and tell everybody how I feel. And then based on what other people did would be the direction. So I can't say we're going to vote on it because it would have made I ever got a second. I may not even made the motion if everybody thought it was, we, you know. So it wasn't intended to mislead or anybody. But quite truthfully, and I think Commissioner Holcomb alluded to it, if we'd have put it off and fill the room full, unless something huge happened, I don't think the vote would have changed. The commission put them together and the commission took them back off. I mean, people get personal about it, but it wasn't personal for me. It was logical. Sorry about that. Also, uh, on that on that same object, talking about putting things on the agenda, you know, I've been surprised sometimes by, by things that are on the agenda because uh, a fellow commissioner wants to, uh, for not having a better word, put up a trial balloon to see what's going to happen. And then in the meeting, they find out whether it's going to happen or not. And there's been uh, numerous occasions since I've been on this board uh, when the trial balloon didn't happen, didn't pass. It was on the agenda, but it didn't pass because it got turned down. Sometimes three to two, but uh, it didn't It didn't pass. So whatever happened could have happened today. And there's no, no way you'd have knowledge of that. So our attorney speaks last. I have nothing additional. Well, with that, we're going to we have a two o'clock workshop at two o'clock with the health department, Robin Napier, and the Well Florida Council CEO Jeff Feller regarding the 2015 Hernando County Health Rankings. That's at two o'clock. We're not going to adjourn the meeting. <laughs>